How's everybody doing today? Yeah. Less than two weeks left in the semester. Let's get this done, yeah? <laughs> my name is Merrick Stauffer. I'm a first year ag biz student, and this is my co host, Peter Fonsale. Ag biz. We'd like to welcome you to our sixth annual Ag Venture Business Plan presentations. After experiencing two years of online lectures, we are very thrilled to, face, to be back face to face with you today. How many of you in the audience has written a complete business plan before? Oh, good to see some hands. You guys, I'd hope so, right? <laughs> These 37 agribusiness students you're going to see this afternoon can now add to that accomplishment to their resumes. Each group has taken a business from a complete concept to a comprehensive and professional business plan. And we hope you enjoy them this afternoon. These students are going to give you a snapshot of their innovation business ideas. We hope to Hope to pique your interest so that you will come join us at Spurs after the presentation to talk more about their plans. We are gathered here today on traditional Treaty 6 territory and Region 2 of the Métis Nation of Alberta. At Lakeland College, we acknowledge that Indigenous people are the first people of our country and we honour and respect the history and of this nation. Some housekeeping items. We would ask that you only enter or exit the theatre when no one is presenting on stage. Please shut off your phone or turn it on silent. Feel free to use video or flash-free photography to capture some of your favorite moments on stage. The washrooms are out to the doors to our left, and the closest muster point is the parking lot in front of Alumni Hall. In an effort to keep our time and scope, we will be working with a limit of two questions per presentation. We'd like to introduce some of our guests, special guests who have joined today. We have Michaela Malone. She is a Lakeland alumni, alumni who graduated with distinction from the agribusiness. This means it was not very many years ago, and she is now a business partner. She worked with Vermilion Credit Union and is now working at uh, Ireland Farm Equipment. These organizations have enabled her to utilize her passion for agriculture and skills in financial literature. Next, uh, Aquina Collette. Our second guest judge is a local social media influencer, Aquina Collette, aka Aquina in the Kitchen on Instagram. Aquina's business is about sharing easy recipes that result in amazing meals. She empowers all people to be the ruler of your own kitchen. Aquina farms with her husband and two sons north of Manville, Alberta. Please feel free to follow her at A Queen in the Kitchen to enhance your eating experience. Next, also, we have Taylor Valenu from AgVisor Pro here, a proud alumni, and we are glad you're here with us today. First up, we have Cody Carson and Hilary Sauter with Northern Willem, Willow Custom Cattle. Cody is a young cattle producer from Rossburn, Manitoba, where he where he and his family own and operate Northern Light Simmentals. Cody has worked in the livestock grooming sector for the past five years and specializes in sale and show preparation. Hillary is a cattle producer and has been involved in the cattle industry all her life. She is from Hodgeville, Saskatchewan, where she and her mom own and operate Windy Willow Farms. Hillary is a very passionate about clipping, sale cattle, and the entire cattle marketing industry. Here you have it, Northern Willow Custom Cattle. Right. It's great to see everybody here today. Before we get started, um, we would like to show you a couple of pictures of the same heifer. Oh. So here's the first picture of the heifer. Uh, in this, we would like you to pay attention to the top line and head. And in the second picture, we would like you to look at the same areas. Now, by a show of hands in the audience, who feels that the heifer is presented better in this picture? And who would think that she's presented better here? All right, so our business will take your cattle from looking like this to looking like this. My name is Hilary Sauter, and I was born into the agriculture industry. I began clipping cattle when I started 4-H 16 years ago. 
Clipping cattle has become a passion for me, and I strive to show my best quality work, especially when clipping cattle for customers. I'm Cody Carson. Um, I've been in the livestock industry ever since I was born. Over the past five years, I've started to specialize in show and sale cattle preparation. Uh, although I've been in the industry for a short amount of time, I feel that I've excelled in my field. And over the past three years, I've managed to clip a total of 600 bulls each year on my own. So what is our purpose? Why does a producer need our service? Uh, so Northern Willow has two main purposes. The first is to reduce the amount of labor that is needed by the producer. And the second is to increase the value of the producer's breeding stock. We show up to the farm, we clip and torch these bulls and get them looking their very best so that you can advertise with confidence. Uh, a little breakdown, clipping bulls is when we take a set of shears, which is very similar to a razor for humans, and we give them a haircut. Uh, the second step, torching, is when we burn off the old dead hair that is grown in over winter to shine up their coat. We also offer a custom freeze branding service that just further reduces the amount of labor that is required from the producer. Also, both Hillary and I are very confident and we are very dedicated to our work and we keep track of the, the way that bulls look in certain areas. We then openly offer this information to our consumer so that they can evaluate their cattle compared to others within the industry uh, based on body condition score and overall quality. So services that we provide is clipping and torching bulls, clipping and torching females, freeze branding, as well as multi-min injections and delousing. For the multi-min injections and delousing, um, the materials are at the cost of the producer. And we also have some services that we would like to implement into our business in the future. Um, we would like to hire a livestock photographer as well as an AI technician and have cattle grooming and livestock fitters to cover the show side of the industry. On the picture on the left is us torching and the picture on the right is us clipping. So moving into our range of availability for our services, um, here in the purple area is where we will be available to clip bulls. It is important to note that for me and Hillary to cover this amount of ground, it will take a large amount of planning and scheduling, but we know from past experience that this is easily possible. Uh, moving behind the green line to the southeast, um, this is our range of availability for clipping sale heifers. The reason it's so much smaller is because we'll be clipping less females and we want to work closer to home. And then again behind the black line here, this is the cutoff for our freeze branding services. Once again, there will be less number of head that we're, we, that we're using, or that we're working on, sorry, and uh, we would like to stay closer to home. We will be charging $45 a head for clipping both bulls and females. This is the, at the top of the market for price. And although we are a new business just entering the market, we are very confident in our price. Cody and I both have years of experience in this industry, and we feel that this will gain our market share in the future. Uh, we also charge $25 a head for freeze branding. This is a standard rate in our region. So moving into Northern Willow's first three years of financials, <clears throat> we've showed you our revenues, our expenses, our net profit, our return on investment, and our owner's withdrawals. Uh, it's important to look at the revenue. In the first year, we will meet, reach our maximum capacity. So this means we will be working on as many cattle as we possibly can within our time frame. That is why our revenue will stay consistent from year to year without growth. Uh, we know this is a bit ambitious, that we plan on meeting uh, our absolute maximum capacity in the very first year. However, this, is a very, this service is in very high demand and there's not many people that are out there performing it. So we feel that if anything, we will be turning away customers rather than searching for them. If you look at our expenses, uh, year one is slightly higher than years two and three. This is just because in the first year of operation, we'll have to buy a small amount of more miscellaneous equipment that we will not have to in the next two years. Uh, we feel that our ROI is very strong for a new business just entering the market in its first year of production. And our owner's withdrawals each year will be in the amount of 130000 that will be divided evenly between Hillary and myself. And the rest of our revenue will go back into the company and it will be used in years four and five to invest in more services such as the livestock uh, photographer and the AI technician. 
Overall, the main goal of our company is stated in our mission statement, to provide quality service and improve the value of producers breeding stock while offering quality market insights. Now, before we get into questions, we would like you to understand that we are not just service providers. We also have the knowledge and understanding that can help producers when um, evaluating their cattle, um, considering body condition and quality within their region or across all three provinces. So, if there's anybody in the audience today that is a purebred producer that would be interested in the service, or if you might know somebody who would be interested in the service, we would be very happy to talk to you afterwards at the Student Center. And uh, with that, we'll move to questions. Uh, yeah, so our plan, uh, what our financials were based off of, was a total of 2,000 bulls, um, 1,500 heifers, and that's for clipping, and then a total of 1,000 animals freeze branded each year. Yeah, we have a trailer that we haul our chute and basically we bring everything except for the um, multi-mune injections and the delousing that's supplied by the producer. Just one more question, sorry guys. How did you tackle your first year? Uh, in our first year, our biggest challenge is just trying to figure out our route plan. So, like we mentioned earlier in the range of availability map, um, that is a lot of ground for just Hillary and myself to, co to cover. And in that year, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to get from place to place at the right time for the producer and at the right time for us and still make a profit by not traveling too far. Thanks, Cody and Hillary. In uh, 1928, Lakeland created the motto, Ever to Excel, and that really shows today with their presentation especially. They're very passionate about this, and uh, I think that they could go a really long way with it, so thanks again. I'm also uh, kind of working on being a part-time comedian, so I'm going to test it out today, right? <laughs> In a bit. Okay, uh, next up we have Austin Smith and Davis Schmidt with Sasky Field. Austin joined us at, at Lakeland from Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan with both sides of his family having heavily involved in agriculture. He is excited for the future of ag and is looking forward to his own future in the industry. Davis grew up on a mixed farm operation that sparkled his passion for agriculture. He plans to continue his path in agriculture at Lewis Farms in Spruce Grove, Alberta. Next up, Sasky Field. to refuel. Oh, time to take my protein powder. This stuff sucks! Here, try this. Okay. Wow! That's great! Sasky fuel.
Hey everybody, did you guys know that Saskatchewan is a world leader in pulse exports? Saskatchewan alone produces 95% of Canada's lentils. We here at Sasky Fuel, Sasky Fuel utilize the potential that lentils have to become a protein powder source. Hi, I'm Austin Smith and I come from a family that's been heavily involved in the pulse industry for over 40 years now. And hi, my name is David Schmidt and I'm from Watra, Saskatchewan and we are here with our business, Sasky Fuel. From bushels <laughs> to biceps. So as many of you know, there's a growing need for more protein alternatives. In the last year, um, pardon me, in the last year, plant-based sales have increased 31.2% in the last 52 weeks ending on July 31st, 2021. Other protein supplements include a long list of ingredients that we have no idea what they do, let alone how to pronounce them. Here we have our packaging for Sasky Fuel. We really wanted to incorporate the look of the grain bin, as well as the Saskatchewan flag and the Canadian maple leaf, as well as the organic certification logo. We here at Sasky Fuel have a three area client ID that we plan on reaching. Our first off will be our plant-based diets. And as Austin explained in that previous slide, we have a 100% vegan product. So we feel that this will be easy access for us and it'll be an easy alternative for the vegan diet sector to try our product. Secondly, our lactose intolerant. A lot of us look at yogurt, milk, cheese to get protein. Uh, I know specifically from having family members that have lactose issues. I would look at using this product simply so that they don't have the gut ache after and they don't have to take the three lactate pills before taking in any lactose products. And our biggest area is our everyday athlete. What do athletes need to do after any big exercise, any big sporting event? You look to refuel yourself. So with that, our product offers, offers a smaller serving portion compared to our competitors, but also has the same amount of protein in it. So our project needs our capital. We need an investment of $250,000 to get us off the ground. And with saying this, we literally mean with purchasing two carrier vans to get to our stores and deliver our product, as well as a building supply, or a building that we can hold our supply, a warehouse, and also getting in with Sask Food Center in Saskatoon. And for those that don't know what that business is, it's a business that's located in Saskatoon. They help us design our product, basically from design all the way to packaging and getting it out the door. Our marketing, we would look at hiring this out as well as maybe gaining it through a partnership. Um, we would like to get, gain shelf space as well as gain awareness of our product and get it out there. And research and development will be working alongside Sask Food Center. They actually offer a team of strictly research and development that will help us produce the product that we need and that our consumers are requesting of us to get to them. Here we have a look at our projected finances for Sasky Fuel. In year one, we have a net income of $88,000. And this is also due to the government of Saskatchewan giving us a grant of $115,000. We also have a return on investment of 165% in year one. In year two, we have a net income of 124,000. Year three, $71,000 net income. And I know you look, you know the math's not right on this, but in year three, we're expecting another grant of $70,000. So with that, with Austin and I being here, thank you for watching our business plan. And we now open the floor to any questions. Yes. For Sasky Fuel, we're then at 25 grams per serving. Uh, yeah, you on the left. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, my left. Yes, yeah, so there's a very limited market for this right now. From my research, I've only seen uh, peas being used as this, so that's the only other pulse crop I've seen. There's been a few companies trying to do lentil protein, but not on this kind of expanded market for everyone. Can I have a follow-up to that? Yep. Yeah. 
it's more so for your everyday supplementary needs. So you can throw this into anything, you know, your baking, your, your oatmeal, your smoothie, everything. It's just a daily supplement to take. So we expect this loss of income to be the expansion of producing more goods. So, you know, more product, more costs associated with that. And we're still waiting to hear back from the food center to hear an actual qu quote on what production will be like. So we, we figure this will be a kind of a realistic number in year three. Thank you. Yep. <laughs>
Our services are completely free to our customers to use unless they want to upgrade to a premium subscription. And don't worry about finding us. We'll be all over social media with an easy to scan QR code for easy downloading access. But we know that not all farmers are on social media and maybe a few shouldn't be. <laughs> so we're still going to utilize print ads in the Western Producer, the book where farmers look, and auction catalogs. When we're not worried about video killing our radio ads. <laughs> we know all that time spent in the tractor, sprayer, or combine, people are still listening to the local radio. So if you're having a drag on efficiency within your operation, download UAG. We'll get you the services and labor needed to sprout your growth and harvest a reaping return. The three of us plan on attending as many farm shows across Western Canada. At these farm shows, you will be able to download our QR code as shown on the screen. Once you have signed up and created an account on UAG, we will give you merchandise that you can proudly represent a trusted brand. I know everyone in the stands are wondering how we're making money. UAG generates revenue through ad spacing and premium subscription holders. With a premium subscription, you're allowed to po or sorry, boost your posts as well as get rid of ads altogether. So if we take a look at our financials, in the first year, we're going to be in the hole about $25,000. This comes from the creation and initial startup of our website. In year two, we're still $5,000 in the hole. And in the third year, it's a good sign we're going to break even. In four, five, and six, we're expecting a steady growth anywhere between five to $10,000 in revenue. And in the latter years, we're looking at potentially selling our company off to a company that doesn't have to use a third-party IT support. To get the best service quality possible, we're asking for additional funds on top of our $30,000 initial partner contributions. We're going to get grants from the Alberta Innovates grants. There's multiple programs and we're going to range from about ten dollars to $20,000 per year. And since UAG is a little bit partially woman owned, we might get a little bit more. But what UAG really needs is a broad network. So we're looking to invest $5,000 to collaborate with ThinkShift to gain more knowledge on marketing to attract users. Neither of us are uh, too tech savvy, so UAG is looking for a technology expert and we plan to spend about $15,000 in the initial startup and launch of our website just in case any hiccups occur. After our fifth year, we believe with the knowledge as partners and the resources we will acquire, we will be the biggest agri site for farmers in Western Canada. We thank you for listening to our adventure of creating you ag. You can now scan the QR code and we'll be handing out business cards so you can access our website to get a better idea on how it works. We will now accept any questions. Uh, we've looked at reaching out to multiple companies like big companies such as Richardson, Pioneer, Nutri and other local companies too. I know this is going to differ from your geographical location too, like every place is different. So we actually have a list written out of potential industry experts that we can place on our website. See, we're kind of... We have accounted for possibly paying them, but the other thing is we're allowing them to advertise so then they get the business through our site also. Uh, right now, we're, we're understanding that in the first one to two years, we need to get traction. So we're thinking about doing about a $4.99 per month subscription or a $49.99 yearly subscription. That one's really slim. And I turned it off. 
Thank you. It's uh, good to see we're, we're moving in direction with agriculture, especially with youth creating these apps, making it easier. Now we just have to convince grandma and grandpa to maybe lay off the prairie farm report and get the phone in their hands, right? With the old Western producer. Next up, we have Brooke Ballard and Kelly Helminski with CB Sunflowers. Brooke grew up on her family's cattle farm in northern Alberta and looks forward to bringing her knowledge back home and seeing where life takes her. Kelly is driven with the focus on agriculture, which started on the family ranch in southern Saskatchewan, where she plans to return after graduating. Up next, CB Flowers. Hi, I'm Callie Helmetzi. I'm Brooke Ballard, and this is CB Sunflowers. But before we dive into our business plan, we'd like to ask you guys a couple questions, and whoever can guess the closest will get a bag of spits. Just shout out your answer when you have one. First off, how many species of sunflowers are there? Seventy is correct. <laughs> Our second question is, how many seeds do you guys think one sunflower yields? <laughs> Who said 1,200? Oh my gosh. You guys have a fight over it. The answer is 1,500. I'll give it to Brianna. <laughs> CB Sunflowers is a 50-acre sunflower farm located right here in Vermilion, Alberta. We are along this Highway 16. The sunflower field will be filled with many activities for the whole family and your friends to come and join us. After the fall season, we plan to distribute the products in different ways, which you will learn about later. Our goal is to create happiness by surrounding people with the warmth and feeling of summer. We want to see families come together, friends make memories, and to provide quality sunflower products. We have two different categories for our products and service. For our general, these will be offered year-round, or within our season. First off will be a sunflower bouquet shop, a sunflower maze, a concession, a petting zoo, and of course, kid games. Our specialty items will be offered at least once a month. There will be a drive-in movie theater, a haunted maze in October, a wedding venue, and a pick-your-own-bouquet day. One of our competitive advantages is that we do have a very broad target market because there is fun for everyone, from children with, or families with younger children, older couples, anyone at this stage in life who might be getting married, um, along with we want to do tours with local businesses like Grow and Know and school field trips. And then in the fall, when we harvest our sunflowers, we want to distribute them for livestock feed and bird seed. Our pricing is based off of a general admission. Adults will start at $15, ages 4 to 11 will be 10, and 3 and under will be free. Also, your family of four can come and join us for the day at $50 with an extra $10 cost for additional kids. A season pass will also be available at $55 per individual. For our finances, we have a positive trend throughout the projected three years. For year one, we have a net income of $27,000, year two, $41,000, and year three, $62,000. This is important for us because we plan on upgrading and adding more services every season to try and attract more customers and have them coming more than once. We each put in $10,000 of our own money along with we got a $20,000 operating loan. Our advertising will be sold mainly on social media with Facebook and Instagram being targeted. With these posts, we will update the public about past and future events and also how our sunflower field is growing. We will also have road signs on either side of our field and a website that you can all attend. 
on the website. It also shows about our company, what we offer. They can contact us through there along with they can book their next trip or event. Thank you for listening and we'll now open the floor to any questions. Yes? Um, so this will be, we'll just rent land for this. And then everything else we have to purchase, like the concession trailer and then some of the animals we have already for like the petting zoo. Um, and then for the seeding and the harvesting, we're just renting that equipment as we don't need it for much because we're only doing like 50 acres. Yes. For the first year, it will be just Brooke and I, and we will take any volunteers available. So, our family. <laughs> and then, for following years, we are looking at getting summer students to come and help us out. Thank you. I know I had many years of uh, being a youngster, just crushing sunflower seeds and drinking lemonade, getting canker sores in the tractors every summer. Then I upgraded to Copenhagen Wintergreen. <laughs> uh, uh, next up, <laughs> next up, we have Kaylee Wursta and Nelson Letts with K and N Marketing. Kaylee is from a purebred cow-calf operation near Elk Point, Alberta, where her family owns and operates K-Cow Ranch, raised in Herefords, Black Angus, and Charolais cattle. They are proud to offer purebred genetics that are both functional in the show ring and in the pasture. Nelson is from a mixed farm operation near Westlock, Alberta, where he has full-blood Fleckvich, Charolais, and Simmental cattle. He's always known he wants to be part of the livestock industry because of the connections he has made. It's the day before your family's bowl sale. It's just about the single most important day of the year. Your filing system is missing bidding numbers. The computers and TVs aren't working. You're missing certain cords and the electronic store closes in an hour. Let's just say there's no talking that evening at supper. Have you been there? Or what about when you sit on the couch looking at your photo album, wondering why you don't have very many pictures of yourself or of you and your partner? All oh, right, you don't take any. Or the ones you have taken aren't great and you don't want to post them. Don't worry, we got you covered. Reduce stress, save your family's relationship, build your self-esteem. Improve your confidence and build and create your own brand. That's what we can do for you. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. I'm Kaylee Wursta. I'm Nelson Letts. And this is KN Marketing. To start with our services, we offer sales management, graphic design, cattle insurance, photography, and videography. There will be a QR code at the end of this video that you can check out our website for a full list of all, all of our services and of, of our price list. We have two major goals in our company. One, for sales management, we hope to expand this aspect of our company into a countrywide scale. So we hope that our services are requested across each of the provinces of Canada. 
For our second goal, we hope to expand our graphic design and photography business to an international scale, where our services are getting requested on a global scale. What we need to get our business going is a $30,000 investment. This is so small because Kaylee and I are contributing $30,000 worth of equipment to the business ourselves. We're hoping the person we partner with has strong connections in the agriculture industry, as well as a strong marketing background. A little bit about how we're going to make money at this. So in the first year, we're going to do one sale per month, except in the months from May to August, where we'll focus on photography and graphic design. In the first year, our profit will be around 42000 with a return on investment of 118%. In the second year, we'll do three sales with a profit of 158000 and a return on investment of 542%. And in the third year, we're planning to do five sales per month with a profit of 242000 and a return on investment of 834%. Now, when it comes to our clients, we have such a diverse range of services that our clientele reaches a huge audience. We have well-known cattle ranchers who are looking to give up sale day responsibilities to individuals who are looking for graphic design or photography for literally any occasion. Now, with our services being so extremely and having such an extreme variety, we have the capabilities to offer and reach a huge, huge audience. A little bit about how we're going to market this company. The first thing we're going to rely on is that word of mouth marketing because in the livestock industry, this is everything. The second thing we're going to do is have an ad on 840 CFCW. And this is to help reach the older generation of farmers that we want to take over sales management for. The third thing we're going to do is activate social media accounts such as Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And this is a good way to show some of the stuff we've done in the past as well as reach new clients. The last thing we're going to do is make merchandise such as hats and shirts and this is a way to hand out at trade shows along with current customers to get them talking about our business. Now you can scan this QR code with your phones and it'll take you to our website for that full list of services as well as the price list. And the best thing about it is that our services are fully customizable to whatever the client would like. And so what can we do for you? Increase your confidence. Build your brand, improve and save your family's relationship, and reduce your sale day stress. As for our investors, you're getting your money back in the first year as highlighted by that 118%. Why not become a member of a functional and awesome operation? KN Marketing is so diverse in our services as we offer more than just sale management. We offer photography, videography, and many other types of graphic design. And so we believe in our industry and with our values of customer service, loyalty, and trustworthiness that we can build this company to be strong, reputable, and profitable. Who's with us? Now I'd like to take the time to invite some questions. So for those who maybe didn't hear, the question was, do we plan to expand our team? In the coming years, in years four or five, if we have more sales and we fear that we cannot manage them ourselves, we do plan to expand this and hire another auctioneer uh, and another set of auctioneer and ringmen, as well as having another graphic design person and maybe another photography person as well. Uh, actually, for our sales, it's 10% of gross sales, which for many competing ones are 15%, so we're significantly lower. Brianna? Good? Okay. <laughs> Nice work, holy cow, or should I say holy gay cow ranch, and that was good. <laughs> Man, they're lining up for a Super Bowl commercial with that intro. 
You know, if you need a good study break, just go watch Super Bowl commercials on YouTube. We were doing that last night. My God, some of those are insane. I don't know how they get away with them these days, but they did. Next up, we have Vian Stassen and Stefan van den Eyden with Bearded Liquor and Booze. Vian was born in South Africa and has felt right at home here in Alberta. Currently, he resides in Cold Lake with his wife. He is no master brewer, but loves the craft. Stefan is a young man with strong agricultural background who enjoys distilling alcohol as a hobby. He would like to pursue this into the possible business for the future. Next up, bearded liquor and booze. Well, can we give those men a quick hand, round of applause there for their quality announcement there? <laughs> I'm Vian, that's Stefan, and we're Bearded Liquor and Booze, a drink worthy of a hard work in Alberta. We believe we are entering into a unique profitable mar market. Our products come from distilling uh, sp unique spirits and brewing beer. We offer a sit-down uh, experience, in-house sales, and you can find us at your local liquor store for your convenience. For our drinks, we have a wide variety of drinks, but for our drink specials, we have an old-fashioned whiskey, French vanilla rum, raspberry vodka, blonde ale, caramel brown ale, rich molasses, and coffee-noted stouts. Uh, we offer finger foods like hamburgers, fries, onion rings, etc. Um, they will be coming from a, a neighboring store nearby us, and we will profit share with them as we have sales. So we're looking at mostly expanding on the, our free markets, kind of like I guess, advertising, where we're looking at Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and. Uh, we're looking at going to like farmers markets and using word of mouth marketing and getting some liquor sales as well. And future reference, we'll try and get into some um, like shows as well. For our price, we'll be priced at thirty dollars a bottle for a seven hundred and fifty mil um, bottle of whiskey, rum, or vodka. Um, we will be eighteen dollars for a twelve pack of beer, any kind. Um, our drinks will be $5 a piece for a whiskey or a beer, depending, and our profits will be based on 30% of our cost. That will equal to $30 a bottle, or $18. So here we have a few pictures on the screen about kind of what we're looking for for our cocktail lounge. Uh, kind of having a view an area where you can sit, drink, enjoy your food, and watch kind of how we're brewing and distilling in the back there. Uh, you can find us down on White Ave. We, with all the foot traffic and the nightlife, will be quite profitable. Our business overview is a 50-50% partnership um, business. I will be doing the stilling of spirits and uh, finance and accounting and other things around the store that needs work. I'll be taking care of the brewing, the marketing, and customer relations and consulting for that. Since we're so new in the market, like uh, restaurant, we're, we're going to be kind of part-time here and there, like, like nighttime shifts kind of thing, and we'll be working our other jobs to generate profits until we get the ball rolling. As you can see on the screen, we have a few pictures of some of the equipment that we'll need for our operation, and um, we're looking at an overall estimated of $52,500 of an upstart in cost. For our financials, our first year revenue will be $44,000 roughly. Our net income will be $5,200 and we'll have cash in the bank of $17,000. Our revenue for year two will be $50,000 and our net income will be $11,000 and our cash in the bank will be $26,000. Our revenue for year three will be $55,000. Our in net income will be $14,000 and our cash in the bank will be $38,000. We hope to... Um, make our sales grow as we go on but the first years three years are supposed to be the hardest and we're going to be able to try to make it so anyone have any questions for us today oh, right over there uh we're looking at renting at first and then i was like probably in year five or six possibly buying 
upstairs? Yes. Will your products be available in particular uh, We're mainly right now trying to focus on just getting into the Alberta like liquor store market and then from there like slowly expand out and possibly try and get across all Canada. Uh, most of it probably just be by trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> we could offer samples at Spurs. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. I uh, actually live with Vian and Stefan, and the uh, brew booze not at the school, but. They brew it, and it will uh, it will put hair on your chest. That's for sure. So, ladies, cautions. Um, it's good, but uh, you know, no, it's actually really good. It, you can drink it straight, mix it with anything. It's phenomenal. Next up, we have Bryce Ozenchuk and Mark Nornberg with O and N Safety. Mark and Bryce come from a strong agricultural based backgrounds for specific knowledge in crop and brief production. Additionally, both of these guys also have experience working as volunteer firefighters in their local municipalities. This combination of knowledge and skills has spearheaded this project and they hope you will enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Mark and Peter. Nice introduction, thank you very much. I'm Mark, across the stage from me is my friend and business partner, Bryce, and together we formed ONN Safety Connection. Uh, as stated in our introduction, we both grew up in small rural farming communities, and after high school we both joined our local volunteer fire departments. Together we have a combined experience of eight years on those departments. With that, we've noticed one flaw in the system, ambulance wait times with waiting up to about 30 to 40 minutes once we've gotten on scene from traveling 10 to 20 minutes to get there. At ONN Safety, we'd like to provide you with the training on how to manage that emergency scene until we get there, or better yet, mitigate the risks that would cause that emergency scene to happen. We are planning to be located primarily in the Elk Point area. This gives us a great, um, great access to our target customers, thus that being uh, rural farmers and, and rural operators. We are planning to take advantage of using community centers such as like recreation halls as well as uh, Bryce Ozenchuk's heated shop on farm to carry out any in-class style courses or instructions. We also plan on providing a mobile service and that way we can expand our client base and bring the classroom to you. Some of the course offerings that we plan on providing are uh, your standard first aid here on the screen, standard first aid CPR AED training, as well as basic life support. This giving you the opportunity to possibly save a life while EMS or any other safety services are en route. We'd also like to dip into providing different uh, courses like ATV, UTV safety, as well as grain bin and fall protection safety. This leads us to a project need. In order to get a couple of the certifications that Bryce and I would need in order to instruct uh, grain bin safety as well as fall protection and UTV safety, we would require some grants and funding in order to get that style of certification. So for our first three years of operating, we're going to see a profit or projected profit. Uh, revenue is from about teaching 100 to 140 uh, people each year. Expenses will come from uh, our fuel cost to travel. Uh, basic uh, consumables such as your uh, uh, gloves, bandages, etc., that you need for your training. We each have to put in around $3,000 on the first year to just to purchase some of the larger items such as our CPR dummies. And it should lead us with a profit at the end of each year to invest back into the business or to take out as a owner's withdrawal. 
some of our marketing efforts that we plan on putting in place. Um, we plan on use, utilizing word of mouth marketing a lot. Uh, we're planning to build a website that giving our customers the opportunity to leave reviews about our services. We also plan on per, uh, building a Facebook page and Instagram page to build a following so that we can keep our customers up to date with any services that we're wanting to provide. We also would like to dip into possibly uh, putting up a booth at Agribition and uh, Agritrade. This gives us a little bit of a chance to widen our uh, client base again and it, it helps us when or, sorry, pardon me, I have to, <laughs> I have to build my thought here now. <laughs> it, it, helped, it helps us because there's lots of uh, people that would require this style of service that are at these conventions and expos. With that, we'd like to thank you for your time and open the floor to questions. We weren't planning to. Uh, this style of training is quite hands-on, and much the same with Lakeland College. We need to be in course and be in person to, to take these style of courses. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, could you just repeat the question? I'm really sorry. Some of the courses are going to come with a certificate, such as like your first aid, so you can actually take that to go with other businesses uh, if you're going to go work in the oil field for the winter and such like that. But uh, some of the other stuff we're going to have to look a little bit more deeper into for that. I know fall protection, you still that's another ticket you can get. That's a very niche market that we could get into, but it's, it's tricky to get into with uh, a lot of hoops to jump through. Does that answer your question? Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Mark and Bryce. Uh, it's good to see that bringing it into the agriculture just because anything can happen out there, especially if you're in a rural, rural location. And yeah, anything can happen. I worked in the welding industry for five years, and we were always trained up doing all that. And, uh, it can get uh, boring doing those training programs, but at the end of the day, it's definitely the direction we need to head. So, thanks, guys. Next up, we have uh, Cool Deep and Joe Ben Preet with Anti Counterfeit and Supply Tistic. Cool Deep and Joe Ben are international agribusiness students in the marketing stream. They grew up on the mixed farm in India and have a keen interest in the industry. Their aim is to help farmers manage the challenges they are facing in the world of agriculture. Next up, anti-counterfeiting and supply techs. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kuldeep, and I'm here with Jovan. So uh, our, today we are going to present our business plan, anti-counterfeiting and supply techs. As you can understand from our name, anti-counterfeiting, so it means we are going to tackle the counterfeiting issue which is happening in India large scale. Okay, so our big idea is identify the original from heaps of fakes. According to the research, one out of five products are fake in India, which is our selling on large scale. And especially in the agriculture sector, if I talk about the pesticides or other things. So <clears throat> I belong, we both belong to an agriculture background, so we know it very deeply about the agriculture products and everything. That's why we are going to focus on agriculture products, first of all. So here is our industry outlook. If we talk about India, India is a world number four pesticide maker and on number six exporter. Uh, the overall mar pesticide market in India is 26 billion USD dollar. It is estimated that a four billion a fake pesticide market is four billion 
dollar usd dollar which is increasing by 20 percent growth rate every year however the overall market growth rate is just 12 percent which is very low to compete with so uh, to compete with this counterfeiting issue and uh, we are going to provide various services to uh, agriculture market and agriculture companies so first of all anti-counterfeiting it means we are going to provide a QR code uh, which we will paste on every product as you can see here so with this QR code they can easily identify whether the product is original or not so company can and also cons consumer can find out as well as this QR code will help to digitalize the inventory for the retailers for everyone in the warehouse and everywhere so they can get to the know what is how many products in their inventory and how many they sold and also it will help in the supply chain because uh, with the help of QR code they can track companies can track their product from warehouse to the till sale we are providing a lot of specialized offering. Our first specialized offer is we are providing a simple and a single QR code in every product which is easy to accessible for the consumer as well as company. We are also providing a dedicated portal for the consumer if they need any additional information from that like the where this product is manufactured from where it's shipped and also we are going to provide a consumer support service if they need a consumer found any fake product they can directly contact us or if they need any additional information about the product our to make this business successful our project need is we need some IT a person to help us for making the application as well as for the dedicated portal also we need some marketing connection to grow our business uh, we are spending our own money which is thirty thousand dollar to in, uh, start this business uh, it is uh, we converted this number from uh, Indian currency to Canadian dollars Okay, so to make our business successful, we come up with the sample marketing and the business model. So our sampling marketing plan is approach the brands in person or by mail. Actually, we have some contacts in uh, many companies. My cousins or my family members work in many companies. So I can reach out to them and will utilize them all definitely to get or to attract with the companies as well as we will uh, create campaigns to aware the consumer as well as the farmers and companies so they can reach out to us for services as well as f as you can see our business model we have created with three we come up with the three business models simply I can say that we will charge per unit like the uh, scan or they utilize our services also, we will charge them quarterly ways for our portal services. So here is our yearly forecast. As you see, we are getting $15,000 in year one, which is good for us as we are investing just $30,000. So it is a successful business for us. Uh, and also we are getting a rapid increase in our profit year by year, which is 85,000 in year two and near about one lakh in year three. Okay, so as he stated that, interesting fact is we converted these numbers into the Canadian dollars because if I talk about Indian currency, it means it's worth millions. So don't think about it just $15,000. Think about Indian because we are going to start our business in India. So we will earn millions. So our business... <laughs> so... <laughs> So our business plan will be definitely successful and we hope that. Okay, so before saying thank you, I would like to tell you a few things. We belong to agriculture sector. So that's why we are thinking about agriculture sector first of all. But in India, counterfeiting is happening in every sector. So we will also, or we are also thinking to uh, reach out to other companies or other sectors to to expand our business but for few years or in initial 
uh, first three years we will start with our new ag agriculture but after a huge success we will also go to other sectors we will approach them okay so for any other queries or if you need any help or if you have any business where we can help you so contact me because I'm a marketing head of my, our brand and Joban Preet will handle operations and everything any questions yes Ms. Darla Uh, thank you. It's a really great question because I forget to tell you. <laughs> okay, so uh, to reach out the farmers, these days the farmers are really uh, interacting on social media platforms. Also, they started attending university uh, fairs, like uh, where they go for new information and new uh, technologies. So we can also go to the colleges, universities uh, to reach out these kind of farmers. Anyone? Yeah. Um, your first year, you got $50,000 Yeah. Okay, uh, you can multiply with the uh, 60 bucks. You will figure out. <laughs> yeah. 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 So $900,000. No, it's a 92,000 Indian rupees. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so, okay, to, okay. Let me tell you one thing. Here we earn. As I am, I also work at Boston Pizza, so we earn fifteen do fifteen dollars for one hour. So, which is can if I convert in Indian currency, it will be nine hundred bucks. Okay, okay. But in India, for eight hour shift, you are just getting four hundred bucks. If you are thinking about the billions, year by year we are getting huge profits. That's why we tell we are getting billion dollar profits. That's why we ask. <laughs> Millions. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Cool Deep and Joe Ben. Uh, super honoring to have those guys come all the way across the world for a first class education like we get here at Lakeland College. Yeah, it's cool. Stefan was, <laughs> Stefan was uh, telling me last night that uh, Cool Deep was always on his laptop at three in the morning over in India and in the airport on his laptop, just, yeah, getting his education, which is pretty cool. So good to have those guys over here. Uh, the next up, we have Christine Thormalen and Ashley Bacchus with Gals Gear. Christine Thormalen is an outgoing international student from the north of Germany. Ashley Bacchus grew up on the family farm in Saskatchewan and carried her passion for agriculture to Lakeland College. Both are hardworking farm girls that wanted to create a workwear brand specifically for women in agriculture. Go girls! Good afternoon everyone, my name is Christine and together with Ashley we're the gals behind Gals Gear, a women workwear brand. Over 30% of farmers in Canada are female and that does not even include all the farm wives, daughters and sisters that are part of the farm too. And most of them, us included, end up wearing poorly fitted men's workwear or in general just workwear that doesn't fit them because we have such a hard time finding something that fits nicely. Here's how it looks for Ashley and I. As you can see, Christine and 
and I were having quite the predicament. Both of us were having to wear men's workwear to get the job done. And we'd like to ask, do any of you have similar problems? <laughs> you know what, men included. <laughs> We found that you're not alone. In a survey we did at the beginning of the semester, 91% of women we surveyed had the exact same issue, where they had to resort to men's, unisex, or just poorly fitted women's workwear to just make it work. And this all comes down to sizing. We found that if you had a 27-inch waist, a 38-inch hip, and a 39 length in your leg, you'd be put into three different sizes all at once. Most companies recommend you just size up, because you might as well be a little bigger than too small, and this results in loosely fitted, uncomfortable, and gawky clothing that looks terrible and is actually unsafe, especially when working on equipment and livestock. So this is where Galsgear comes in. We will focus more on specific sizing and want to grow with our customers along the way. Because this business is made by women in egg, for women in egg, we believe it's way more functional, durable, and like Ashley said already, way safer to work with. So how is our gear going to be different? We're first going to focus on elasticity and adjustability. So we're going to start with having elastics up in the bust area and around your waist to keep a tighter fit, as well as lots of adjustment in your hips and moving the pockets further down rather than having them up on the chest. We also are reinforcing the key parts that typically tend to wear out, such as your inner thighs and your knees. Through our research, we found that the maternity line, there wasn't any for women's workwear, so we decided to go with one of those, and with our focus of them being adjustable all through pregnancy, so you can have the same pair of coveralls the entire time. So how can we fit the right size now? Our sizing is built around five different collections, based on five different body styles. Our customers can pick a gal they most identify with, and together with some additional sizing specifications, this will create the perfect fit for their workwear. We will have an interactive web app where our customers are able to create an individual profile. This will hold their sizing specification I just mentioned, as well as the order history, and also create recommendations on upcoming collections that most suit their body. Our main social media platform will be Instagram, and we will also be seen on, at trade shows to have some face-to-face -face interaction with our customers, especially important during the first few years of operation. For the future, we're thinking about licensing our collections out to stores such as PV Mart or Mark's Workwear. And especially important for us is word of mouth marketing as uh, we mentioned already earlier, in agriculture that plays a big role, and especially in rural and smaller communities, we just rely on that. How are we gonna make this happen financially? So in the first year, we're gonna be taking a loss, completely expected where a brand new company just started out. Year two, we come back strong with a $5,000 net income, and year three, stronger yet, with a $17,000 net income and a 10% return on investment. Now, you may think these numbers aren't that great, but we are a company who's really focusing on affordable workwear, aside from it just being comfortable. Christy and I both agreed that we wouldn't want to pay through the roof for clothing to just go to work in, so why should you have to? To keep our customers and to gain new ones, we thought that a rewards program would be the best way. You can gain rewards that go towards your personal account on the web app that can then be used for discounts and specialties. To gain points, you can refer a friend, like us on social media, or help us improve. We are a company that has always wanted to improve and get to know our clients better and make our way into the future successful. Thank you everyone for listening to our vision behind Gals Gear and we would like to open the floor to any questions. Uh, we are in the future going to plan to have a storefront and with a back warehouse in Saskatoon, so then we can start storing it there. Yeah. For our insulated bibs, they're going to be a hundred and no, sorry, two hundred dollars. The insulated coveralls are going to be two hundred and sixty. Uninsulated bibs are one hundred and thirty, and uninsulated coveralls are one hundred and sixty.
very good point because yeah we struggle with it too yeah. we want to be more lenient on it even because uh, it's online and we decided for 90 days it's longer than other um, distributed distributors offer so then this gives our women more time to actually make sure it fits properly and then send back if they if if they need alterations or anything yes We want to make sure we do our job well with women first, because this is our main goal. And uh, we see how that goes and potentially expand to that. But our focus for now is on Gal's gear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, girls. Uh, look good, feel good, perform good, right? Yeah. So uh, we're doing pretty good for time here. We're going to take a quick 10-minute break, then we're going to get back with the rest of the presentations.
All right, we're going to start going back up here again. First up, we have Jen, or after the break, first up, we have Jenna Bowman and Sarah McDonald with Wild Rose Consulting. Jenna is a second year agribusiness student who grew up on the mixed grain and cattle farm just down the road near Dewberry, Alberta. <coughs> Jenna enjoys camping, playing hockey, and spending time with her friends and family. Sarah is a double diploma agribusiness student completing her crop technology diploma last spring. Sarah grew up on a commercial cattle ranch in southern BC and their family now ranches in northern BC. Sarah enjoys showing cattle, riding horses, and snowboarding. Good afternoon, folks. This is my partner, Sarah, and I'm Jenna, and we're here to tell you about Wild Rose Consulting. Our mission at Wild Rose Consulting is to help producers unlock freedom and expand their business through st strategic marketing and financial management. What can we do for you? Financial management is the first portion of our business. This Part of our business is designed to help save you money on your operation. This is things like going through your financial records and finding places where we can improve efficiency on your operation, going through your cash flow and adjusting things to free up cash flow, and helping you develop smart recording strategies. The second part of Wild Rose is strategic marketing. We understand that watching market trends and seeking out those premium customers isn't for everybody. That's where we come in. We can seek out niche market customers to fit your operation and watch market trends and advise you on selling points that we've previously discussed. The packages that we offer at Wild Rose Consulting. The first package is financial advice alone. This is $4,000 for new customers per year and $2,000 for each year after that. The marketing package is $4,000 as well with $2,000 for returning customers. We also offer a combination package where you can have both of these services offered to you at 10% less than if they were purchased separately. For the project need, we're looking for connections and contacts in the agriculture industry to help us build our customer base. We're not asking for a financial investment as the biggest investment in this business is going to be our time. Our finances. In the first year, we expect a profit margin of $34,000. This will be over 10 customers. The next year, we expect profit margin of $87,000 with 24 customers. This growth in customers is due largely to the fact that we will be uh, investing a lot of our money back into the business and into our marketing to grow our customer base. In year three, we expect a profit margin of $110,000 over 32 customers. Now we'll move into our marketing plan as for how we're going to grow Wild Rose Consulting. First off, we want to attend trade shows and industry events. Both Jenna and I love to connect with people on a face-to-face -face basis, and we think it's really important to go to these industry events and to meet people firsthand. We're also going to promote through our website and social media platforms, including Facebook and Instagram. Another marketing technique that we're going to use is supporting local youth hockey teams and 4-H clubs. Jenna and I both grew up being involved in 4-H as well as playing hockey for many years, so it's really important to us that we support the youth in the communities that we're working within. And finally, for our current customers, we want to offer harvest and calving season survival packs depending on what industry they're in. This is just something to show our customers that we care about them and are thinking about them in some of their busiest times of year. So these packs would include something like a bag of colostrum or a bottle for calving season, something specific to a grain farmer, maybe some hot chocolate or a gift certificate to a local restaurant for takeout, uh, a Contigo mug or something like that. And finally, we want these uh, packages to be gifted to them in, a insulated, uh, sorry, in an insulated cooler bag as it doesn't matter whether you're going for a harvest meal or trying to keep a bottle of colostrum warm for that newborn calf, you can always use a cooler bag. So we want them to be really usable. What does your traditional farm office look like? 
When I think of a farm office, I think of paperwork everywhere in a dusty old farm truck. I think of my dad on his phone in the combine looking at marketing trends, whatever. Um, we're farmers and ranchers just like you, so we understand this. Even once we establish an office in the future, we will still come to you and make it work on your schedule. Now we'll move into expansion plans. Over the next few years, we want to increase our customer base. We would also aim to establish an office setting in year four or five. For the first few years, we're going to be working out of our home just to try and save costs, but we do want to have a legit office building in the future. As well, the final part to our expansion plan is in year five, we would like to hire an egg student, maybe someone from Lakeland College, to help us out with the workload and give young egg students the opportunity to learn in the industry. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. With that, we would like to welcome any questions. Yes? Sorry, a price objection, you said? How are you going to justify your cost per year? Yeah, absolutely. I would say that we would tell the customer that we will save you enough money and make you enough money that it will pay for itself in the first year. What area are you guys covering off in your first year being focusing on? How many kilometer radius? Uh, we will be within a 300 kilometer, kilometer radius of Vermilion. Are there any other questions? Good. Thanks, girls. I uh, didn't get the chance to really know Jenna, but I got to know Sarah pretty good, and she's a phenomenal livestock judge, and I know she takes this stuff pretty seriously, so I think this could be very successful. And yes, Sarah, by the way, I did comb my hair, so take note, this doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Next up, we have Nicole Bristow and Raven Bluey. Nicole is passionate about the agricultural industry. She comes from a mixed cattle and grain operation around Heinsberg, Alberta. Raven loves exploring the business aspects within agriculture. She grew up on a family farm that is a mixed operation near Sedwick, Alberta. Grow and know. My name is Nicole Bristow. My name is Raven Bully. And this is our 50-50 partnership in Grow and Know. Our mission is to preserve agriculture while giving opportunities to learn about livestock, animal welfare, and hard work. We also want to earn the respect and help the people who plan to pursue the opportunities presented within the agriculture industry. What we want to do. So we have five key components of what we want to accomplish. We want to promote agriculture, promote animal welfare, present job opportunities, knowledge opportunities, while also giving educational factors to people who want them. We are located right here in Vermilion and have a one to two hour radius up to St. Paul, Lloydminster, Wainwright to Edmonton. To book our tours, you want to go onto our website and then there's a little button that you say book tour and you <laughs> Um, you have the choice of how many animals you want to see during a tour. Our tours are four to six hours long and happen once every two weeks. There is also the chance of stopping at some local small businesses such as CB Sunflowers and a local brewery. Our finances, so in year one we're going to have a net income of $12,000 and our return on investment is 6%. In year two, we have about the same projections due to we have owner's withdrawals of $10,000 each. And then coming into our year three, we plan on doubling the amount of tours that we do, which then gives us a net income of $60,000 and a return on investment of 22%. Then into our prices. So our ages zero to five, they get a free ticket and also a free bus ticket. 
and our ages 6 to 12 get a purchase a $10 ticket for any tour. 13 to 17 is a $25, and 18 plus is a $30 ticket for any tour as well. And then we have our standardized $25 tickets for the last three categories. And if you have a group of 30 or more, we also have discount packages as well. Our marketing strategy. So we have three, base, three main platforms that we want to use are Facebook, Instagram, and a billboard that's going to be located right here in Vermilion. The picture in the middle of the screen is what a billboard could look like. We plan to use Instagram as a form of social media that could reach younger generations. And the, reasons, the reason why we want to reach younger generations is to present them with the job and knowledge opportunities that could possibly help them pursue a career in the ag agriculture industry. <laughs> Here's an example of what an uh, Instagram post could look like. Uh, we plan to post updates of when our tours could be or what happened during this one tour like that stood out to us. Or. And then we plan to use Facebook as a form of social media because it's been around longer than Instagram and allows us to reach more generations and all generations of people. And we will post around the same things that we do on Instagram, what we do, how we want to do things, and when tours are coming and everything like that. And then here's a video of some of our animals that we have to offer on our tours. International harvesting us some whole weed. Yeah, let's take a ride. Uh. So, for, to make this happen, we'll need a loan of $240,000 for the purchase of a bus and the basic fees of our website. This will also include some of the farms that we plan to visit. Uh, pay, uh, <laughs> keep going. For, so, the bus will be approximately 58 people and allows for our expansion ideas. Our expansion ideas is to eventually have school tour groups with us. And as an opportunity for you, the person that invests in our business gets our bus naming rights. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We are now opening the floor to questions. So, for example, for cattle, we would make sure that the cattle are obviously quite quiet for, like, example of demonstrations and things like that. And they will always be behind the fence corral, so, like, they won't be near the animals. But if it's, like, a chicken, I'm pretty sure an adult can hold a chicken, so it would be, like, a little bit different <laughs> compared to which animal you're wanting to see. Yes? Yes, we did consider that, and we thought of things like little booties that you put on before you go into a dairy barn, and then obviously, um, like washing hands and like keeping everything clean and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, so we want to do, we want to promote animal welfare for sure, because that's a big thing where people don't really know exactly what they're dealing with. And then we also want to, like, show them what a cow eats or what a chicken eats or what a pig eats. And then, yeah. 
Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, ladies. It's very important that we uh, continue to educate people with so much scrutiny in the world. Uh, I guess we could thank Yellowstone for making everyone to be a cowboy these days, but there's a lot more into it, and these tours could really push to educate people in a, in a good sense, just because we're so looked down upon in so many aspects, so we need to change that around. Ethan Slump, are you taking notes, or what are you doing? You have to do this next year, you know that, right? Oh, look at that. Do you have a pen? Oh. Okay, next up we have Tell Freeman and Kyle Wanchuk with T&K train, Horse Training. Tell is a second year agribusiness student who is pursuing a job in agriculture after his studies. He is a high energy and talkative person who has a passion for the western way of life. Kyle is an aspiring young cowboy who is looking forward to competing in his first year in the Canadian Professional Rodeo Association. After school he plans on training horses as a full time job. T&K Horse Training. Letter buck, boys. <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> That's what I like to hear. There's the rowdy section right there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Tel Freeman. And I'm Kyle Wanchuk. And we have TNK Horse Training. Are you tired of having a horse who's just always being a pain and won't work the way you want him to? Well, you're not alone. We're here to help. Our service is training horses to be both a performance and ranch bred uh, horse. And we are going to put about 60 days on each horse. And at the beginning of those 60 days, we're looking for a horse that has just either been halter broke or is green broke. And we plan on making that horse able to be able to be ridden, roped on, as well as ranched on. Uh. Tal and I's goal is providing, ho providing horse training excellence one ride at a time. This is our mentor, Mel Highland. He's also a family friend of mine. Um, this guy is a two-time world champion, six-time Canadian champion, and he's been riding horses his whole life. Um, he showed me everything I know about horse training, and he's really helped us along with his business plan. He's even given us his round pen to start our business this summer. So some of the finances we have, in year one we plan to make a revenue of $107,000 with a net income of $50,000. Year two, $122,000 revenue and a net income of $69,000. And then in year three we will plan on having a revenue of $150,000 with a net income of $100,000, which would allow me and Kyle to each take a net profit of about $80,000 split two ways and then invest $20,000 back into the business. So our marketing strategy is, we need to look into social media to set up a Facebook page, an Instagram page, but also to set up our own website where we could have a few live demonstrations, as well as maybe talk to a few of our clients that we already have about maybe putting their names and numbers on there and just having it as a reference for new clients to call and ask about our services and how we help them. And then another thing we need to work on is our word of mouth marketing, as a lot of the older generation would rather sit down, have coffee with somebody and learn about us over the table rather than through social media, or even coming and doing a farm visit with us to see us in action before they bring us a horse. Um, for customers, we're looking for both performance and ranch horses. Um, I myself rodeo and can make performance horses, which includes um, cutting, reining, barrel racing, team roping, calf roping, and all that. And then for ranch horses, we want to be able to have that horse able to go to work and tie down a calf or pull a cow out of the pasture. And uh, for ranchers who just don't have the time or the horse experience, we want them to be good with that. Uh, this is a video. These are one of my performance horses. This is my little heel horse. See, he's got a nice stop on him. And uh, this is my calf horse, Gunner. I'm uh, just looking for him to stop when I ask him to and work the rope and keep the rope tight. This is what we're looking for in a good calf horse. And uh, this is just a picture of a rancher and 
this is kind of some of the stuff we'd be doing once we get them half broke. And this is kind of what 60 days of riding to do. This is just using your feet rather than your reins for pressure. And I just make them stop and back up here. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we need from you? I know, the big question. <laughs> what we need from you is the connections and the networking. We are just starting out. We do have a small network, but I know there is some people out there who could definitely give us a hand with this. Any questions? We'll go the lady on this side first. <laughs> Um, no, we don't need to take him for 60 days. Like if if he's already half broke and just green and doesn't not experienced with cattle, we're more than happy. Like depending on where you live, obviously. Like if you'd be willing to like pay for it and make it worth our time, we'd more than sure come on and ride him and get him used to that stuff. So you're happy that they're rather flexible then? Oh yeah, yeah. For the right price. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll go with the other lady in the middle this time. For what, sorry? Indoor arena. Um, we have, where we're located is my house, Sherd Park, Alberta, and I got like 10 indoor arenas all within 10 minutes of my place. So. <laughs> Big flex there. Okay, we'll go with the other lady now. <laughs> Um, our plan oh. <laughs> is to charge a thousand bucks plus hay, whatever the cost, because it's always changing. That's what our mentor Mel Highland told us. So, so roughly right now it would be about 1250 bucks a month for a horse at the current price of all of our commodities. Darla? Darla? No, we're, we're trying to stay away from them. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to stay away from them just because that lots of times will give you a bad name better than a... Because like lots of people... Actually, I have a neighbor who wanted me to ride a four-year-old. I put five rides on it, and then he took it home and put his 10-year-old daughter bareback on it. And then he got mad at me because she fell off as it ran away. So, yeah, we're definitely trying to stick to like more of a niche market that performance and ranch horses yeah. more than just anybody. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Well, uh, you don't have to worry about if they buck, because Kyle will spur them in the main and make, ride them down, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeah, don't let me get on, I'll blow my elbow out. <laughs> Next up, we have Brianna Elder and Connor Sherminsky with BK Consulting. Brianna Elder is a double diploma ag business student in the marketing stream. She has grown up helping on the family farm as this is her passion. Connor is an outgoing student who is committed to agriculture. He grew up on a family farm that he runs as a partner with his father and he loves that he is a part of such a great industry. BK Consulting. Good afternoon. I'm Brianna Elder, and across the stage is my business partner, Connor. We are here this afternoon to talk to you about BK Consulting. So a little bit about who we are to start off. We are not your average business people that are dressed up in a student tie. We are farmers for farmers, and that is actually our business's vision and mission statement. So to start us off, I'd like to ask a couple questions. Um, number one is, who's from a family farm? Holy goodness. <laughs> um, uh, who plans to go back to the family farm to work with mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, and whoever? Okay, my last question. Who loves money? 
you're going to love my business here. <laughs> oh, I guess our, sure. Um, we're here to teach you guys, to give you some tips and tricks on how to make some off-farm income, or we'll even connect you with someone that can give you marketing advice, accounting advice, or even simply uh, crop or cattle advice. So here at BK Consulting, we have three key objectives that we believe in. Number one is to create that off-farm revenue that you're looking for. Number two is to provide appropriate guidelines and to educate farmers. We want this to be a pocket a pocketbook of knowledge for your back pocket. And number three, bring people back to the family farm because we know that at times can be tough and it's hard to get back to the family farm if you have multiple other family members trying to do the same thing. So what we offer would be a subscription-based platform as well as a little bit of a basic platform. So it would be a phone call or a meet and greet and we can give you some tips and tricks quickly. So our Four packages we offer is a basic package would be a $200 meet um, or a phone call, whichever you would prefer. And then we'd go into our beginner subscription, which is a three-month platform. And every month you get an hour of us on a phone, hour of us in person, and an hour of us uh, representing you guys at business. So putting your guys' name out there, or if you would like it, we'd go with you guys for a land loan, equipment loan, whatever you would prefer. And then intermediate to step up, so that'd be a six month, and now it's two hours every month during those months. And then advanced is one year where we help you out through the whole year with whatever you need. So here's a little bit of a rundown for our financials. In year one, we plan to make a $77,000 revenue with around a $63,000 expense, which is going to leave us with a profit of around just over $14,000. Year two, our revenue is going to be um, around $122,000 and an expense of 116000 with a profit of $6,000. And then in year three, we're looking at a $202,000 revenue with $170,000 expense and a $3,200 profit. Um, if you're wondering why our expenses seem a little high for a consulting business, this is because um, we plan to do a lot of advertising. Advertisements and billboards are our number one source of advertising, and they're very expensive, both digital and paper billboards. So that's where that comes from. So our marketing plan for you guys would be is simply Western Producer. Uh, get a hold of the older generation as well as that young guys that where Grandpa tells you go look at the Western Producers. Got something cool on there. Um, and then a billboard around Westlock where the business is based out of. And we'd put it at our entrances to the town. Um, and then as the years go on, we would like to put more billboards up. And then we would also have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to connect with our younger generation, and as well as trade shows in Regina, Saskatoon, and Edmonton. So if you're looking for a little bit more information for BK Consulting, if you scan this QR code, it will give you supplemental information as well as our business plan, so you can see the full runover of everything. Any questions? Not all at once. Nelson? Currently within a 100 kilometer radius. And then in year three to four, we plan on expanding to where I'm from, so West Central Saskatchewan. We'll, we'll cover um, that whole area. So from West Lock to West Central Saskatchewan, that area between the two of us. Yes. Uh, great question. Um, it would be more of people would see it and we'd have our phone number up there and hopefully would, they would look at us and we'd see our phone calls come in, our emails come in, or simply someone would dri uh, drive to our office or where my farm or the main operations come out of for the first three years, they'd come by and ask me a couple questions. Cole. Um, it would simply be if you were looking to start a new business like myself, when I'm done college here, I plan to launch uh, my snow removal business in the winter, have something to do and give me uh, an extra $20 bill that I can go spend at the VLTs. Well, I hope he's not playing the NVLT at the Nest because that thing don't pay any money. <laughs>
I was uh, talking to Clinton last night. He's a uh, first year ag biz, and I'm like, oh, you got any uh, business plans for next year? He's like, yeah, I'm going to make a farmer's dating app. I'm like, what makes it a farmer's dating app? So it's going to be full of hoes. <laughs> hey, Clint said it, not me. <laughs> Okay, up next we have Alana Huckabay, Chase Hankey, and Denver Selty. Alana grew up on an acreage outside of Sherwood Park where her grandfather had a small herd of pet horses for recreational use. She has enjoyed studying agriculture and is excited to see what the future holds for her. Chase is a second year agribusiness crop student who grew up on a mixed farm who is very happy with the decision to continue his learning here at Lakeland. Denver is a second-year agribusiness student who grew up on a cattle farm from Vermilion, Alberta. He decided to come to Lakeland to pursue a better knowledge of business and agriculture. And here, up next, director producer DDP. So I'd like to start this off with a little bit of a question. How many times have you been in the field or in the crop and you're spraying? and you eventually run out of product, or you break down and you don't have the parts because you don't have the time or the people because you have a million different jobs to do on the farm. Uh, well, do we have the service for you? Hi, I'm Chase Hankey, I'm the financial lead. And I'm Denver Selty, the marketing lead. Uh, I'm Alan Huckbay for customer service. And we are direct to producers. Okay, we are delivery-based, app-based app delivery service for farmers during busy season. So uh, they get us positive need with our working, and we end the same time that way. And I'll also offer a variety of suppliers if farmers have preference, as they often do, to Nutrien or a co-op or whatever they can choose. Also, if, if something's cheaper, they can, they can switch over if they want to. Like I said, we want to save producers time by delivering supplies to them. And what we need from you is a, a, a loan for the truck of about, of, of about 60 grand and a five grand for the app development initially. How we are going to market our company is word of mouth. Word of mouth is very important in agriculture. And how we can word of mouth this is we could start the word up through the retailers and tell them we can deliver their products for them to their customers so that their warehouses aren't packed and full of orders that they cannot pick up on a daily basis. We could also um, market it by online advertisements. We could online advertisements to the app so it could lead them from websites, from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram. And then also trade shows. We go to trade shows. We could. We could uh, buddy up with all the new products coming out and we could tell them, you want to buy this product? We could deliver it to you so then it makes it much easier for the retailers. And then newspaper advertisements, it's, we're trying to focus on the older generation who still leads the sales flyers. So then what's on sale and also in the newspapers and we could say, you want to buy some farm products? You could go to our web app and find and get it delivered. So just going off of our financials, in year one we are going to be uh, incurring a loss that is partly due to uh, the purchase of a truck and the app development. But as the years go by, we are increasing our revenues to increase, like our net income, mostly because our increased customer base and the amount of kilometers that we are going to be driving. Just going over our pricing, we are charging 25 cents per kilometer driven, then a flat charge per order of $10. So. If we only drive two kilometers, we are still going to be making a little bit of a profit with the flat charge. And for example, if you're to place an order and you live 20 kilometers away, the total cost of delivery would be $15. So our customer target isn't the bigger farmer operations that have hired hands or the small ones that don't really need the extra people to, for deliveries. We're looking for the average size, the people that need help with deliveries. So. For example, for the cattle industry, you're out and you're in the calving season and you need extra tags or you need extra medicine for calves that you get in wrecks with. And also for chemicals, we could do like extra herbicide jugs. If you're in during spraying season and you need an extra jug of herbicide, we could deliver that to you if you're in a bit of a pickle. And then also parts is also, parts is also um, when you're in a jam or whatever and you just need to fix it and you just don't have time and you need to fix other equipment and you have other parts. And then also for seeding season, we could make sure that if you do the math wrong and you have like, you don't get a certain amount of seeding bags, 
we could get the extra bags to you, and you could still seed away what you have through the seeding of time. And we feel that the customer target, we need to figure out how to benefit your time so you spend more time on the farm and less time driving to town. So we want to thank you for listening, and we always follow the model that we are direct to the producers for those on the go. Any questions? <coughs> Uh, the way we kind of targeted it out was from when the retail's open then to a couple hours after, so kind of like a 9 to maybe 7 o'clock, just for if you have any extra stuff still in the truck. Then during the later seasons, like seeding and harvest, we will expand hours just like the retails do too. Yes, yes, it will be. Uh, yeah, so we are going to team up with the retailers so we can advertise all their products because you know as farmers they kind of have brand loyalty or they go wherever is cheapest so we're going to advertise with all the retailers, the different prices and then the farmers can choose from there. I f there probably will be a little bit of difficulty getting out the different prices but Hopefully, we hire someone smarter than us to figure that stuff out and help us. <laughs> yes, Darla. So in year three, is it still just one truck running? Or uh, in year three, it's still one truck running, but we are growing, so we're reaching more deliveries per week and more kilometers driven. And by year four and five, we are expanding to different towns and maybe even considering buying even a bigger truck so we can start hauling fertilizer. Thank you. Uh, Hotshot service is always an awesome commodity to have. I know we could use it all the time. Uh, there's been many times it's been Saturday and it's 11.55 and Dad yells at you to haul ass down the road to get to the parts store and you don't make it and it's all your fault that they closed at noon. So... <laughs> Next up we have Tyson Black and Marco Portina with MT Livestock Tracking. Tyson comes from a purebred Charolais operation in Renfrew County, Ontario. Through his involvement in agriculture, he has developed a passion for the betterment of the industry. Marco is a double diploma dairy student from Southern Ontario where he grew up on a dairy farm. Marco has a strong interest in the agricultural industry. MT Livestock Tracking. I'm going to start off with a question for the audience. Uh, who here spent uh, hours on pasture trying to find their cattle or have had that one cow get out and you have to go try to track her down? Yeah, well, we have the solution for you. Presenting MT Livestock Tracking. I'm Marco Portina. And I'm Tyson Black. So why we started this company? Me coming from a dairy background, we use technology every day in our day-to-day -day basis and it helps us save time, makes everything more efficient. One thing I noticed from helping in the beef industry and going attending different trade shows is the lack of technology that is being utilized. From talking with Tyson and creating a plan, we came up with MT Livestock Tracking to make uh, beef producers' lives easier and more efficient. So what is MT Livestock Tracking? We focus on livestock identification, livestock tracking, and record keeping. Our tags go with our app to track each individual animal when where they are at all times. There is also a portion on our app for record keeping. This is where you can keep track of your treatments and vaccinations as well as your breedings. There is a cal calendar integrated within the app so you can plan your treatments and vaccinations for the future and know when you need to do them. So how it works, when you get your tags in the mail, You will connect the 
You'll connect the tags into the app with the serial number on the tag. You'll then connect the cow cow's name or number into the tag on the app. You'll then put the tag in the cow just like any other regular tag. And then you can put whatever data you think is important about your animals into the app to keep track of it for the future. As you can see by this picture, this is a mock-up farm of cows with tags. As you can see, most of them are where they're supposed to be, and then you've got the one that's taken off, and now you know where she is. And you know how to find her quickly. <laughs> so our marketing strategy. We plan to use social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook uh, to keep customers up to date on the, what's going on within our company by posting on our pages, as well as we will pay these platforms for ad time to make sure our ads read our, reach our targeted customer, as well as stay relevant on their feeds. We will also be attending different trade shows like Farm Fair and Agribition, and we will present be presenting our product as well as giving demonstrations to customers. As word of mouth marketing is very big in this industry, these trade shows are a great way to get our uh, name out there a little bit. So for pricing, through communication with our mentor, we figured out a cost of production for $45 per tag. Through that, we figured out our first year would be $55 per tag is what we will be charging. In year two, we, had, we increased our price to $60 per tag. This is because we are offering more than our co competitors, as well as we feel we will be well established in the industry. In the third year, we continue with the $60 price per tag, as well as we will consider price bundling depending on what our financial situation is at that time. When looking at our uh, finances, you can see the first two years we were uh, at a loss of income. This is because of our high startup costs and the fact that we're new into the industry with uh, little customers. We determined that our revenue would come from the customers that we got. The number we came up with was around the 50. This is what our mentor described as would be average for the new business of this standards. Then into the year, third year, we finally broke a profit. Well, we determined this because we'd have our name out there and we'd have new clients coming in, as well as our clients from the first two years would be coming back to purchase more tags again for their future. So what we need from you, we're looking for technical logical support with the development of our tags as well as our app as it is very tricky and we're not very tech savvy, the most tech savvy people ever. As well as we're looking for investor support of $100,000 to help with cash flow issues we see in the first couple of years and this is an exchange of 20% equity in our company. Any questions? Cool. Um, yeah, we feel that uh, we can. We also stated in our business plan we are looking into legal issues uh, with it in case it were to fall into the wrong hands as well because that could be uh, also utilized from these tags. So we have a protocol in place for that in case that were to happen. But in the future, yes, we could eventually look into using this technology to track, tag, or to track vehicles and other things. They'll be able to transfer numbers if they input the number into their system. Uh, it should stay with the cow, stay with the tag. So yes, that. the records are per cow and individual. So as if you were to transfer the cow, it transfers over everything. Sarah. Yeah, so um, we don't really have anything quite in place yet, but we do. But most producers will typically realize if a tag is, hasn't uh, been moving around or anything. We also kind of looked into if our tags aren't moving around, if it'll get flagged right away in our app. So then you can figure out if there is a problem or if the animal is hurt or something. Um, we talked about in the future expanding into more tag markets where we could expand into neck tags, brisket tags, and other things like that, but that would need to be once we're based, once we have our 
clientele kind of based and we're growing and uh, are able to get this tag off the market first. So whenever you're buying 100 or more tags, we'll drop the price, we'll knock $5 off per tag. Just bulk buying, yeah, cheaper. Thanks, boys. I'm sure glad that uh, idea is coming out now because I know one of those would have ended up in my truck when I was 16 and I would have gotten a lot more trouble then, so, yeah. Oh, very interesting concept. I think that should take off, so. Ooh, that kind of reminds me of a Core Blunt song. Ben in the Sand's coming up. <laughs> Next up, we have Levi Soa and Hamish Matthews with Levish Tile and Drainage. Levi grew up on the grain farm near Wadena, Saskatchewan. Levi is a double diploma student from Lakeland's Crop Technology Program and plans to return to the family farm after graduating from AgBiz. Hamish Matthews, co-founder of Levish Tile and Drainage, was born and raised in the small town of Ingersoll, Ontario. He also is a double diploma student coming from us from the Animal Sciences Dairy Program here at Lakeland. Leavish Tile and Drainage. <coughs> How's this for the wow factor, Darla? <laughs> so do any of these photos look familiar to anybody in the audience? String time, this looks familiar? Okay. Before we start, if anyone like a brochure, um, we have two people passing out brochures just with an overview of the business. <laughs> well, we're here with hopes to kind of help your uh, spring problems of getting stuck with our leavish tile and drainage. Uh, my name is Hamish Matthews. I was born and raised in Salford, Ontario. Um, as we all know, uh, the agricultural industry is becoming more and more competitive every day uh, due to the growing population. Um, southwestern Ontario specifically, um, it's becoming so competitive that it's nearly impossible for young farmers or any farmer to expand their land. Um, back in 2020 or 2012, a neighboring farm uh, sold for $19,000 acre, $19, per acre. Um, and last year, the same farm sold for $29,000 an acre. So my name's Levi, and well, we're not the most productive on our grain, or like on grain land in Sask and Alberta. We kind of have a lot of wasted with sloughs and going around them, and then there's a lot of time wasted. So we decided to bring some tile drainage our way instead of just being all Ontario. SARF so vision is to utilize Canadian farmland to the best of our ability. As it is becoming more difficult to increase the workable areas due to inflated land values and the growing population. Um, seen in the picture, you can see what basically what tile is, is it lowers the water table for you. So if you have wet fields, you put tile in there, whether it's systematic or non-systematic, and it lowers the water table for you. And the major bonus is it grows your uh, roots. Your roots grow almost double the uh, length compared to without drainage. So what our company offers, it's pretty simple. We offer the ability to increase workable acres without purchasing more land. Well, did you know that every year Canada loses 50,000 acres just to the expansion of cities and towns? Uh, that's a lot to lose on just loss from urbanization. Imagine what else we're losing it on, salinity problems, water, uh, and also the increase in land every year is pretty exponential, like 8.3 in 2021 and another 5.4 the year before. With land going up, we need to be more, we need to use more land, more efficient. So I'm sure the question in your heads right now is why drain? We've been working our land without drainage 
this whole time, and my father and my mother say it's not necessary, we don't need it. Well, actually, give it 50 years, and we're going to be scrambling for land if we don't start doing something about it now. So in the following picture, um, this is a fully systematic tiled field. Um, you can see your straight lines are over top higher elevations, and then where the valleys come, that's your lower elevation, which carries the water to the outside of the field, which you can see there's a ditch here, and then there's also a ditch on the other side. So why drain? You get earlier seeding date, which is the big one. That would really get your neighbors going if you're in the field a week before they are. Um, it mitigates soil salinity problems, encourages deeper root systems, eliminates risk of drowned crops, and the big one is less damage than ditching. And when I came from Ontario, came out here, nobody's tiling, they're all putting these 30 foot wide ditches in their field and it's just a mess. With the tile and drainage, once you go over this field with a cultivator, you won't even know there's tile in there. So what our product need is, well, all we really need is somebody to help get our name out there and help us with customers. We invested enough money between the two of us and the help of our two fathers and we got a loan to start off with 450000 to get all the equipment. So right now we're just looking for the customer base to put in the tile and help them fix these problems shown on the screen. So services provided for the, uh, for the purpose of this video, we just gave our, you guys our average um, pipe. Um, our company can lay anything from 2 inch all the way up to 24 inch pipe, uh, depending on how big the lake is or slough, or just wet field you're tiling. So 4 inch pipe is 1 inch per foot, 6 inch pipe comes down to $1.35 a foot, 8 inch pipe is $1.70 a foot, um, and then connections are $25 a connection, and our pipe starts at a length of 400 feet, right up to 2,000 feet. Um, so for per acre, you're $1,400 to $1,600, but most situations that we will be doing with our business is not systematic, not per acre. It's going to be doing, your slough is here, 400 feet to your ditch. And that's basically it. So here are financial, financials. Uh, in our first year, we end up losing about $11,000, which I think is pretty good with the amount of money we took and just getting off our start. And then the second year, we're hoping to get up to a profit of 61000 this is due to just getting more customers and doing more throughout the year. And then year three, we're hoping to get even more customers and be able to do more in a year. Our plan is to, because there's only a certain time where you can put it in, and that's kind of the spring and the fall, where we're hoping we can get some people onto summer ditching too. So maybe we do an in-crop line as it's just one line. You're not losing a whole lot, or maybe just summer following for a year. And then our marketing strategies, we have this OVU digital business card. Instead of handing out the business card at the farm shows, everyone takes a bag home, they throw it out, they lose it, it never gets done. So with this business card, you pretty much put your phone up there, you can scan a QR code or just like the tap function, and it'll put our contact right into your contact. So there's no, you have to type the number in or anything, and then we're there. It's, you don't lose it. On the, so, and that's kind of our plan with what we're going to do for our shows. There's about three we plan to go to, and then we plan to hand out our brochures to. And then when we're in the field doing our work, and when the neighbor sees the guy in the field a week earlier, we have the field signage with our name and number and how to get a hold of us so they can also be in the field before their neighbors. And then word of mouth is a big one. Just everyone talking, oh, these guys got in the field a week early because of their tile, or tiles work and we need it too. We're hoping with uh, the word of mouth, as we all know, farmers talk, and farmers really like to talk and spread whatever they can talk about, to be honest. Um, so word of mouth, the big one is if we can get one client, if we can do his field and he has roads all around his field, every person that drives past is going to slow down and think, what the is going on in this field? And it's just going to have a snowball effect and hopefully... That will be our main source of marketing. So that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening. Uh, we would now like to open the stage for questions. Uh, it's very limited. Like I did some research, and in Sask, I only found one other real competitor, and. I didn't look too hard into Alberta, but I never found anything from what I looked into. So for com 
competition that's very limited. So, and we like took our prices off of what they pay in Ontario. Uh, we're not a, we upped it about 10% kind of just to get everything started in that, but comparable to Ontario, we're pretty close where there's lots of competition. The, the big thing is, in, well, for our business plan, we did a 100 kilometer radius for where we will be getting and finding jobs. And in that radius, we found there's no other companies that are doing drainage. Um, but for an example, in Ontario, um, ever there's, you, there's so many t different tile drainage companies that it's so competitive that when they, they're buying their uh, pipe rolls, they're not marking up their price whatsoever. They're selling it for what they bought it, and they're only making money on their labor. So since we're the only ones in this area, we're marking up on our pipe. And then hopefully with time, we can keep it at that rate and not have to go down just because there's no other competitors. Does that answer your question? Yeah, for sure. Perfect. How deep does the building go? Uh, well, it, it all depends on the elevation of the land. Like, the equipment runs off GP. Like, we know GPS for, like, our fields that go just straight. They sometimes have the hills if you have the money to afford that type of GPS system. But the GPS systems that are on the uh, equipment that we have is depth. So if you have a flat surface and then you have a two-foot high hill, your pipe's going to be going four, uh, two feet down, and then on the top of that hill, you're going to be four feet down, if you know what I'm saying. So it all depends on the levitation of the ground. Does that answer your question? The deepest our tile plow can go is six feet. Yep. Cool. We do. We, we definitely have major uh, environmental concerns. Do you want to answer this one, Levi? You want me to? I mean, we kind of both can. Like, there's definitely the problems where like people are taking away forest and bush and that to build the lands but where if we're taking away water we are getting rid of some wetlands but if you're putting the water into a place where you can't farm it's 15 feet deep you're never going to be able to farm it you're not getting rid of all the wetlands so I think we can work with the wetlands and Ducks Unlimited to be fine in that way but with the future there will be more precautions or like government guidelines on what we need to do to be more sustainable and that definitely can be a problem but we're kind of hoping to get in get maybe get grandfathered in while we're here early we absolutely are ready to not not argue for the purpose of tiling but we definitely have a foot to stand on with the fact that there's 50,000 acres being well disappearing from not agriculture from urban expansion you can have urban expansion but how are you going to feed all these people it has to be with agriculture and if we start running out of land we got started using everything we got, so I think we, we definitely will run into environmental issues, but it's not, I don't think it's going to be a problem for us. Awesome. So it definitely bring your moisture down, as a, but the point in it, like, as you, there was an image on there, even the pamphlet, you can see that it helps you grow your roots deeper, so you're still going to hopefully be able to get that water, even though it's at a lower thing but you're also getting your roots down, you're increasing your fertilizer utilization, and you're increasing your soil health with your soil mi microbes. So your s roots should be able to get down, even though that you're losing the soil moisture, it's still the roots are getting down and they're getting into where the water is. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say you're losing your moisture, you're managing your moisture. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, boys. Save some ladies for the rest of us. My God. <laughs> no, that was awesome. I'd like to see them integrated and send all that moisture to the south where it's dry, and we don't have that. Goodness. Yeah. Next up, we have Kristen Taves, Robin Young, and Shaylin Walls with Gold Genetics. Kirsten grew up in Malford, Saskatchewan. Although she was not raised on a working farm, she loved going to help her uncle in the field and knew from a young age that agriculture is where her heart belonged. Shailen grew up on a commercial cow-calf operation near Alameda, Saskatchewan. She has always been in B4H. She's actively been in B4H for 10 years and has had a passion for agriculture her whole life. Robin was raised in Morinville, Alberta on a cow-calf backgrounding operating where she was 
active in 4-H for over 12 years. She has recently expanded into the purebred industry with Shadow Lake cattle and is excited to see what the future will bring. Gold genetics. Good afternoon, my name is Kristen Taves and these are my partners Robin Young and Shaylin Walls. Welcome to our presentation of our bull set of facility Gold Genetics. At this time, a fellow student of ours will be passing around semen, semen straws as are some samples of what our final product is. I promise there is no semen in there, they are completely empty. So our mission is stated as we are dedicated to building long-term relationships with our clients by offering exceptional rates and professionalism in the office and the barn. Some goals for our facility is to be able to provide this service by starting in a central location in Alberta. The location we have chosen is just a few minutes west of Spruce Grove. The reason we have chosen this location as the facility was already built and there are no other facilities like it in the area. Another one of our goals is to make customer service our priority by making sure their needs and wants are heard by us at all times. We aim to build Gold Genetics to become a one-stop shop for all your genetic needs. From semen testing to putting in embryos, we aim to make Gold Genetics the center for all the services you may need. After arriving at our facility, the bulls are quarantined for 60 days. During these 60 days, they go through a general health assessment, which includes semen testing, blood tests, and a physical assessment. After their quarantine, the bulls are brought back in for semen drawing and freezing. Once the semen is frozen, the producers may either pay to, ha pay to keep store the semen at our facility or take it home with them. We also offer day jumps for in herd use. These bulls are not quarantined or go through the general health assessment. Therefore, their semen is not permitted to be sold or used by other producers. So for our marketing, the photo on the far left is going to be the photo we put up as our sign to direct, to direct producers how to get to our facility. It'll be located just on the outskirts on the west side of Spruce Grove. The photo in the middle will be our general advertisement. It'll be posted on our various social media pages as long as it's going to be put into various breed and cattlemen's catalogs. The photo on the far right is just a general design that we'll use for posters or signs or banners at trade shows and other events we'll attend. And to connect with producers, we would like to offer sponsorship for Champion and Reserve Champion at Bull Congresses and National Shows by offering a certificate to our facility. Our project need is a $100,000 investment for a share of our company. Another one of our project needs is customer loyalty as we're beginning to build a foundation for our company. And our last project need is a consumer demand for genetic diversity. As producers are using semen for an easy way to add genetic diversity to their herd, we want to make it an easy location for them to come to. So our, our first main step in choosing our rates was sales. We realized there was a high demand for genetic diversity and for our services, so we could make our prices high to produce a profit, but since it's our first year and it's a big company, we would like to max out our capacity, so we lowered our rates so we could make some sales. We also realized that our services are also growing within the egg industry, so we wanted to have lower rates so that uh, consumers or producers would be able to afford our services before it becomes too expensive. And then we also want to penetrate the market, which means we are going to have lower rates than our um, competitors. So we're hoping, because we're the only facility kind of in northern central Alberta, that the people driving from northern Alberta or central Alberta down to Al Alta would choose us over them as it's a far closer distance to us then we also have lower rates and we're also offering price bundling so if consumers bring us five bulls at once we're going to offer a certain percentage off their total bill at the end. Our startup cost is just over 5.6 million dollars. To help cover the cost of our startup we have received three loans totaling 4.2 million dollars. To help cover the cost of this loan we have um, received multiple grants at just over one million dollars. We've also each contributed fifty thousand dollars in personal contributions to the company. Looking at our financial breakdown, our revenue in our first year is half of our bull capacity at 25 to 30 bulls. Our second year is at full bull capacity with 35 to 40 bulls. Our expenses go up each year as we are hiring more staff and providing maintenance on our facility. We have received grants through each year to help cover our loan costs 
Our projected revenue is just an estimation as producers can collect anywhere from 50 to 50,000 straws. In our finances, we use 350 straws as an estimation of what producers would take home from us. We would like to thank you once again for coming to our presentation. We also ask if you have the steaming straws to pass them to the end of your row as we need to collect them at the end. And now we are open for questions. So the insurance will be based on what the producer will want to use. We'll have a basic um, insurance form from the Western um, Insurance Corp. It's honestly what they want to do. We can do full coverage or it's just a basic if something happens. So to export nationally, you actually have to do a different amount of days and we will adjust our amount of quarantine or if they need different vaccines to the country they'll be going to. Uh, Kyle, wherever you are in the stands here, he is going to be one of our, like, helping with marketing and PR, so he'll be going around towards, like, trade shows and kind of getting customers that way. Um, we are also going to hire a full-time vet since you need one on seen all the time we actually have a rental property that we're going to be renting out to the vet so that he could be there 24 7. Okay, thank you everybody for coming that was awesome first years we got some big shoes to fill for next year don't we yeah. yeah, so I just want to remind everybody that we're having the shindig at Spurs after. Everybody come out. It is a shindig. With you, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks again. And also, thanks to Cole and Darla. They put a lot of hard work on this and shaping everyone to have successful business plans. That wraps it up.